नगरी में आकर भगवन हो रहा सुखद एहसास तेरी नगरी में आकर भगवन हो रहा सुखद एहसास बस तू है मेरे पास यहाँ और मैं हूँ तेरे पास तेरी नगरी में आकर भगवन हो रहा सुखद एहसास तेरी नगरी में आकर भगवन हो रहा सुखद Om Shanti. So today is a very, very, very happy day for me because Jignesh Bai, I've been trying to get him to do something with us for a very, very, very long time. And finally, he agreed. So I'm very happy about that. To give Jignesh Bhai introduction, I would need a long time, but I'll keep it short. Um, Jignesh Bhai is Baba's very, very special, quiet yogi soul. When you meet him, you can feel the silence and that aura. He's not a talkative person, but he loves his silence. A very yogi brother. He had the fortune of being Baba's child from the age of 10 and he's been in this gyan more than 40 years so all he has seen is only baba's world and i'm so happy that baba took him to to uh, do oh, do amazing seva when nobody has been you saw from the video this morning antartica where baba made him the instrument with sister vishali to hoist baba's flag which is not a small thing and as all of you know, you've been hearing for, from your friends and getting clips and everything. So today is an amazing day for us to listen to his journey of three weeks, how they got to that point. And another quality that brother has, he's an amazing photographer. So the photos that you'll see, you will never see anywhere. So you're in for a surprise. So thank you, Bhai Saab. Om Shanti. Om Shanti, Hema Ben. Om Shanti, Bhai. Sister praise me more than I deserve, right? Uh, so, uh, this, your sister knows you too well. Don't worry, brother. Yeah. Now, thank you so much uh, for inviting me. Uh, I think credit also goes to Nirabhan for pushing me. It's very hard to do this. So, yeah, I've been, uh, you know, uh, in Gyan since I was 10 years old um, and grew up in Gyan and Fortunately or unfortunately, I never took a seven-day course. So I'm born without taking seven-day course with all the love and tolly from sisters. You know, they say, oh, come for tolly, and then you slowly come for tolly, and then slowly, slowly you sit in the Morley, and, you know, you go to Madhuban. Been to Madhuban when very young age in summer vacation. Every summer vacation, we end up in a camp in Madhuban. And, you know, such a fond memory of Madhuban. And uh, last time visited was 2019 or so. Or so. so hopefully get to go again this year or next year. Set ready and relax. And uh, hopefully you are up for a good uh, journey with us. Uh, we uh, went to Antarctica about two, three weeks ago. And uh, uh, so, as I said, uh, we made this uh, voyage uh, you know, to explore um, the new place and figure it out, like what kind of experience we can, can gain. And um, really the title sums it all up, uh, that how I really experience um, God's love and nature's love and just shower upon shower of unlimited uh, blessings and peace. So I'm going to share a little bit about you know, that and how the meditation process we learn in Brahma Kumaris that really, uh, you know, helped me to enhance with this visit or affirm 
the way we learn how to meditate in Brahma Kumaris, right? So that's something I'll share a little bit. And then also one of the big topics I wanted to drive today is the, our environmental responsibility as a human being, uh, what we owe to mother nature. So I'll have some uh, topics to discuss on environmental responsibility. And then some of the metaphors that I personally took away from the scenery and the wildlife, how it applies to our day-to-day -day living or how we can enhance our understanding of Baba's knowledge. Um, and then of course, uh, photo journey, I think the photo speaks louder than um, words. Uh, I'm also thankful to Sister Nina for helping me compile some videos. So we'll do that. Uh, so with that, uh, let's me move to the next slide. So as you know, we all, have been listening and for me 40 years that we are soul right and always we listen first and last lesson soul but how much i have practiced that and made it my own experimentation right it's uh, many times we hear in knowledge that this is a laboratory right the, you experiment um, you mix ingredients and you know make it your own meditation when we are younger in Gyan, we, you know, follow the commentary and kind of learn, but at some point we have to imbibe those commentary in our own uh, soul. So one of the things I experienced there that, you know, we come alone to this world and we live alone. Anytime we go to such expedition to a sort of, you know, very remote place, there is no guarantee. <laughs> if, if, if you get stuck in Antarctica, there is no airport, nothing to bring you back, right? Uh, it, it, just, it just, that's what it is and that's how it is. Nobody lives there. There, there are a few scientists who does the research on the environment, the temperature and, you know, how much global warming happening and all those things. But really it gave me experience that, yeah, you know, this body is perishable. Uh, you have to be ever ready. And just remember that what we take with us is our good karma, right? The, the behavior and all the dealings with not only BK family, but also in our logic uh, dealings with the neighbors, dealing with at, uh, at work, how we interact with others and how we make others feel and you know how our meditation practice reflects in day-to-day -day life it's easy to go to temple or center uh, you know uh, but then how do we leave rest of the time of the day uh, doing our things about so really uh, visiting Antarctica helped me because you are lonely right and if that's one of the reasons Baba says experiment meditation coming to soul world and going down. And it's really that point that I made effort in Antarctica that, look, I'm here. There's nothing but the pure white and nobody lives there. No really uh, vibrations or nothing, right? It, uh, totally pure land uh, from not only physical way, but also the interference of all the worldly business, you know, running around, the car noise, nothing is there. So by while being in the body, it gave me experience of the soul world. And that's something I really uh, appreciated of Antarctica, how, um, you know, you can make the best uh, effort by practicing. Also, if you recall, um, in our uh, you know practice of meditation, we are said that you have to practice meditation when you are in the world. Anybody can go to Antarctica or caves and meditate and have a nice time, right? With the connection to the higher being and get, but how do we practice while we are at our home? And that's where the real tests come, right? It's easy to be at the place where, you know, for example, when I go to Anubhuti retreat center, as soon as I enter the door, I have no 
worry or no thought about what's outside of the door, what happened during the week. You just feel pure bliss of Anubhuti Retreat Center, right? So that's something how, how I felt being in uh, Antarctica. It's totally blank uh, state of mind. At the same time, I experienced the things um, during my life that I put it in a parking lot, like, okay, I'll deal with this um, type of situation some point down, right? Many times we postpone things. Um, while blank state of mind, still there are things pop up for me, which are, you know, things that I put it in a parking lot. Uh, so put it aside and help me to resolve uh, some of the things that I had pushed out to, you know, sort it out. So, so really, um, and that's one of the things about meditation. When we uh, connect our uh, mind with, with God energy, you burn your negative karma, right? And, and, and this is really a good way to, um, you know, we don't need proof, right? We trust, but these are some of the things affirm our practice that, okay, what we're doing kind of aligns with the experience and that strengthens my belief and my understanding and path moving forward. So uh, those are some of the experience. Uh, I experienced meditation in Antarctica. It's really peace. Like only thing you hear there is the wind, you know, the wildlife, and completely silence from everything else. Those are the things that you uh, experience in Antarctica. I also wanted to acknowledge if Sister Vaishali wants to add anything, anytime, feel free, uh, because we she also made journey and we went together to Antarctica. So she has her own experience that she's welcome to share. Um, and also if I forget something, she can always add. All right. Uh, so next topic I want to talk maybe a few minutes is our environmental responsibility. Um, you know, we read a lot in the news and in the science journals that global warming, glaciers are retreating, but this was really, uh, you know, seeing is believing. And for me, listening and at the, on the expedition, they were showing us some comparison of 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, you can really see the difference and how some of the glaciers have retreated uh, certain situation two, three kilometers. Uh, and most of them are like one. So glacier would be all the way out to the water and now they keep retreating, melting away. Um, so it's really testament that global warming is happening, glaciers are retreating. In fact, the temperature rising topic, right? When the week we came back, I think the Antarctica hit the record of highest temperature. I think it's like 30, 40 degree above normal uh, during that time. So uh, it, it, it is the factual and um, the understanding of ecosystem, right? The, the, there's a creel um, and wildlife and there's four uh, seasons they talk about Antarctica, not seasons in terms of seasons, but four waves. The explorers came 100, 120 years ago, started exploring. And then there were whalers who, um, you know, were there to uh, kill the whales and the whole eco life gets disturbed. And I think the bottom of the whole eco cycle is krill. And I start, I heard that krill is being also consumed by human beings nowadays to get the protein. And really that's the, you know, it's it's not good thing to disturb the, the creels. We get enough protein from other things. And um, I think as a human being, we should leave krill for the whales and other wildlife to survive, right? Uh, and then the whole eco cycle in terms of the bottom, you know, krill is being eaten by pretty much every wildlife in Antarctica and then, um, you know, sometimes seals have con are consuming um, other uh, wildlife there, which is a nat natural cycle, but getting human being interference in ecosystem really disturbing. 
So we observed some of those things there. There were some abandoned whaling stations. Um, you know, it's a good thing the treaty was signed some years ago, maybe 40, 50 years ago, that everybody agreed to uh, seize the whaling, uh, kill the whales, and, you know, bring back uh, uh, the whole whaling uh, uh, wildlife there. And then the third one was the seal uh, sealers, they call. They pretty much wiped out the whole seal family, different kind of seals in uh, early 30s or 40s. And now slowly, slowly it's coming back, but not at the level that used to be. Um, and then now it's all the tourism, right? There, there are quite a few people visiting Antarctica and I think one of the purpose of visiting for us was also awareness and share uh, the environmental concer concerns that, you know, global warming and all that. So um, one has to go for some meaning uh, uh, to Antarctica and bring back certain awareness and understanding to share with others. And, uh, you know, thanks to Brahma Kumaris to give this opportunity for us to share. I think another things we hear campaign about plastics and, you know, many birds and many wildlife when, you know, they, they open up, scientists open up their body after they die, they find a lot of plastics and oceans are connected, right? You got Indian Ocean, you got Atlantic, you got Pacific. So we sometimes think, well, how my behavior dealing with this thing affect we are all connected all over the world. And um, I think one use and plastic use really need to control. And many of us, you know, believe in sustainability and uh, recycle, reuse. And, you know, it's very important uh, that we do. We went to one landing, uh, we picked up tons of plastic and other stuff and, you know, bring it back to the mainland to take it to the right place. So there's still a lot of uh, habits that we need to uh, control. Uh, I, I think one needs to think about what we can and we need to do as a better citizen of this world. Um, we have many future generation that relies upon our goodwill and our good actions. So uh, I think uh, this quote by Shane uh, causes and sums up pretty well. I'm going to read and then maybe talk a little bit about it. Give you a moment to contemplate. It reads, I saw that this pale blue dot, this one world, is all we get. There will be no reset button, no new operating system, no downloadable upgrade. We will not be allowed to trade in our old world for a new one with climate control or better fuel efficiency. We get one shot at this. Dismiss all reports of second chances. We get one, only one chance. Think mm -hmm. about no reset button, no reset button. So when computer gets stuck, what we do? Restart, right? Reset, that's how we learn. There's no reset button on earth or on mother nature, no new operating system, no downloadable upgrade. And when we have iPhone 11, we trade in for iPhone 13, right? Uh, uh, the, when the iPad doesn't work, we say, oh, replace iPad, right? So it's the, you know, I'm not saying, uh, and I'm not the, uh, against the technology and stuff, but somehow somewhere we need to learn how to be consciousness of these things and behave in that way. So as I said, some of the metaphors that I uh, kind of related uh, with that is, um, you know, with the animal behavior or wildlife behavior there, uh, there's something called molting process. Um, when penguin, and you will see in photographs that at certain time of the season, they remove all their, um, you know, fur or whatever you call skin. And it could be a very painful process for them. It's very tiring, but it's, it's something that I relate that with the meditation that our physical body is, you know, it's going to leave one day. We all 
born and we all live right and uh, it's molting process is more like a body consciousness we uh, don't have to experiment living this body but at least we can in our consciousness uh, leave the body consciousness and become more soul consciousness look at the humanity as a brotherhood and sisterhood rather than a caste or color or a creed gender right got to go beyond that consciousness of body and really that metaphor of molting uh, removing skin of the penguin was a it's a painful process right to uh, uh, many of you been practicing meditation for quite a time and it's an effort you know wake up at four o'clock right listen to morley come to class oh, those are all effort right behave properly with your colleagues no anger no ego oh my god that that could be some process so it's like a painful process but worth process there's a meaning behind it and there's a uh, reward uh, of of those uh, removing this body consciousness uh, same with skin shedding right it's a similar process we saw a lot of um, uh, seals tiger seals and uh, elephant seals this was the period where they uh, shared their skin and same meaning um, as molting uh, in terms of spiritual aspect. The third one is kind of important. The, we saw a lot of wildlife feeding their young chicks um, and you know saw whales and um, its baby whale and how mom tries to help to, you know, how to expand their flaps and wings and how to do things with the normal life living and i think you all experience when we come to uh, knowledge um, you know god holds our hand and makes us learn walk how to deal situation and still every day what he says first thing in the morley sweet children right so we are still child but as you become experienced um, he leaves your hand a little bit and let you explore, let you learn, let you um, experiment. And, you know, once you fall a little bit and have a bruise on the nose and you, you say, yeah, that's not the right way to fall, right? So uh, we really, I saw that metaphor as our knowledge that when we start taking baby steps, slowly, slowly, we make bigger steps. And at the end we fly um, and, same thing with this uh, chicks. Eventually, they go on their own to the ocean, and um, you know they just learn to survive. And I, I saw that metaphor in our gyan. Um, and then the trusting destiny—that's something um, was really interesting. So let me go back. Uh, got a timeline here. A little bit about Antarctica, right? So uh, what you see is 98% of Antarctica is covered with ice. Um, and also 90% of the ice, total ice of the whole earth is in that continent. Uh, uh, so, and then 70% of the fresh water of the whole earth is there, right? All the frozen ice is a, is a drinking water source. Um, on the right hand side, what you see is the journey we made um, during this voyage. We took off from the, I don't know how to do the cursor, but um, we took off from the south uh, of the Antarctica way down at the bottom um, uh, called the Ushuya and then took a two days uh, passage to direct passage where Atlantic and Pacific Ocean meet, uh, very rough seas. Um, and then right at the bottom where you see the tip is where the Antarctica Peninsula is. And that's where the connection. And then after that, we took a voyage through the Black Rock. That's some three, four small rocks in the middle of the ocean. And then we went to South Georgia um, and then uh, Falkland Island and back to the, back to the Argentina. Uh, took, a, took us about 18 days. Um, and we we landed about 18 times uh, during our voyage to the different islands and observed the wildlife, observed the nature. Uh, during even the 
Weddell Sea, which is on the left, you see all that area, tons of iceberg, how, um, you know, the ice uh, totally separates like a big sheet of like a block or two block long ice just separates from its um, grounds and just floats into the ocean. Uh, so that's another very important aspect of icebergs and uh, very interesting to observe. So yeah, the, one of the things uh, uh, kind of milestone for us was, uh, you know, Sister Vaishali uh, kind of decided to take this flag from Argentina and then uh, we were able to hoist uh, Baba's flag there, um, which is, you know, kind of unique thing to do. And then we brought back the flag, of course, we can't leave anything, we can't take anything and leave there in the Antarctica. So we brought back the flag and um, gave it to the sisters in Argentina. They, we spent overnight there and beautiful family. I think that was another highlight of the trip to spend time with uh, brothers and sisters of Argentina Center. So one of uh, the sister you see, uh, Sister Amelia, uh, she is uh, in left. So she said this flag, this Baba's flag has touched the land of continent of Antarctica. So this flag we are never going to wash. So we are going to keep this flag intact and we are going to have this memory attached to this flag. So they were so overjoyed. And also when we came back, on the next day, uh, Brother Jignesh did also presentation with the nine South Southern uh, in South America. They had a gathering of nine countries and uh, they had a Muli class. And then we had a get together with those family and they were beautiful sharing and uh, they were also overjoyed. And they were also touched that Baba's flag has reached to the continent which one continent is what is left so that was a wonderful journey to back to baba's home and uh, meeting family and sharing this journey with them why don't you share about these four photographs uh, a little bit so uh, regarding that uh, uh, because uh, as this news has been shared widely in india and uh, of course, it is a proud moment for Brahma Kumaris. So uh, how, like, we, first of all, when we go uh, and we, when we land uh, in Antarctica, we cannot just do whatever we want because that's not our land. That land belongs to those wildlife. So they have very strict rules. Yeah. So we have to go to the biosecurity and nothing you can take or nothing you can take uh, from the ship, which is not uh, like, which is foreign. So it's like your clothes. So your old clothes has to be uh, biosecured. And then only those clothes can land on that land. So that tight security we had. So we, I, we had to take a special permission to hoist Baba's flag. And next thing is, as you see in those photos, that you have a certain dress code which you have to follow because you are, uh, because it's like from the big ship, you are getting transferred to the small zodiac. And it's like the ocean swells are so high up that you need to have uh, cover yourself very well. Otherwise, the wind and water. It can be a very harsh for your body. And when we proposed, when I proposed to them that I would like to wear sari, those uh, expression which I got is like a uh, lot of excitement and mixed feeling. And they said that, how are you going to manage? I said, we will manage, but can I do that? So they, it was well received. And they got excited and they mentioned that we have never seen anyone wearing sari on that ice. So how are you going to manage it? So I said, if it is allowed, we, uh, everything else I can take care of. So they did arrange a special uh, zodiac for us. They did arrange special photograph for, for us. And they themselves have Baba supported in a way that it was very well received. 
And when we landed, uh, a couple of people saw me in sari. So we had few people who were visiting from India. And as soon as they saw me, they said, oh, you are Brahma Kumari. So, and, uh, so they knew. And then, uh, of course, it was different for them. So that itself, sari itself was the big service. People approached me. They asked me question. They took video. It means like they asked uh, very uh, thought-provoking and uh, questions about the gyan. And uh, the brother which you, uh, so, okay, first flag which you see with the penguins and that sister, that sister is from Russia. So she was traveling all the way from Russia, which took her like four days to just reach to the Ushuaia port, which is the end of the city, end of the world city of, uh, and, uh, and she was happy to hold the, and like the enthusiasm, which we saw in the eyes of people to just hold Baba's flag. So of course it's windy. And if, uh, Jignesh Bhai has to take the photographs. I want somebody else to hold the flag. I need help. And people were very uh, curious about what we are doing. So that uh, that sister is from Russia. Now the brother you see with Jignesh Bhai uh, holding a flag. So one side Jignesh Bhai from India and that brother, his brother is brother Ali. And he is the brother who took the, that video which is uh, is being posted on some medias. So that video, he interviewed uh, me and uh, he is from Pakistan. So when they were holding Baba's flag and I was meditating, I said, what a wonderful scene in drama that Hindustan and Pakistan is holding Baba's flag and like what a service. So and uh, and then what you see on the right hand side that people were asking questions. So there was so much service and it was, uh, it was a beautiful service we had. So let's throw more photographs. So we were able to take also a, a kayak trip uh, to get close to the icebergs and close to glacier. <clears throat> so you can just enjoy what we experience uh, through the photographs. Um, these are some of the melting of the, uh, this place gets totally white in winter. So right about in a couple of months, it will be all uh, two, three meter of snow uh, all around. We can't see any mountain anymore, but this is almost tail end of the summer there, which was still minus five uh, degrees Celsiusness when we were there. Some more close-up photos. So you can see the broken of ice on the water. Kayaking is the very unique experience. You just feel that you are in between the like mountains of ice and uh, all the snow, uh, all the ice is icebergs, small, small icebergs are floating around and it just feels like you are touching the purest thing in the world. It's just, it, you just feel so much purity in the atmosphere, so much calmness, serenity. So I hope the slides are advancing. The red uh, stuff you see on the kind of mountain bottom, that's the research center of Antarctica. So there are certain countries who have established the research places there. A um, couple of scientists stayed there through winter. Um, and so this one was the Argentina's base there. I think just the enormity of the, the ice and the, the curves and the formation and channels and Colors of the blue, pure blue color of iceberg is just fascinating.
So this what I think you are aware, the abandoned boat kind of looking structure there, that was one of the areas where they had uh, remains of the well. So there must be a welling station at some point, which is now no longer exist on there. You see, start cracking formation on the iceberg, eventually it's gonna break loose and float into the ocean. It was one evening, uh, we had a fantastic sunset and uh, it's just you watch there for 45 minutes, this show of mother nature and sky and color changing. Uh, and the whole ocean floor become red, kind of red ocean uh, with the reflection of it. Uh, it's really a uh, very spiritual experience uh, watching that sunset. This is our one of the landings going through the iceberg and ice uh, to the land. That was the expedition ship. It's small enough to maneuver in small areas. And, you know, we, at one point we passed between the two icebergs and it was really, you know, scary, but you got to trust your captain, right? Just like we try, have to trust our leader. Um, and so this, this was about hundred people capacity uh, for the passengers and their crew must be 50, 60 people. So. Um, it was it was small enough, but large enough as well. Compared to two, three thousand cruise people, cruise that you know uh, being run. Um, this was at one of the island. You can see the zodiac in in between a lot of ice, uh, and the, behind that is the glacier. A lot of geological interest. Uh, there are also different kind of you know. People talk about millions of years ago, uh, this geology formed and India and Africa were very close to Antarctica and then Antarctica start moving. So there's a lot of geological uh, perspective on the Antarctica as well. The little spouts you see on the bottom corner, those are the whales uh, uh, migrating through the ocean from one place to another. Yeah, these are the so sunset time, really golden hour. Uh, and I think one of the things that's why we meditate in the evening also, sunset time, things start up to calm down, the vibrations kind of quieting down. And uh, so this is the one of the nice golden hour photo. The arrangement in the sky is just like a, you know, some artist drew, paint the sky, really that kind of uh, feeling. I think I should show some videos of uh, uh, penguins, right? What shall it be? There's a lag in moving the photos, so it's probably take longer time than I'm given. Uh, but I'm hoping you get the feeling uh, of the scenery and calmness and just pureness of the nature. Let's skip to slide number 44 quickly here. I have 260 slides and I'm only on 64, so I'm gonna jump. Give me a second. So birds, right? Uh, they travel all the way from Antarctica, South Pole to North Pole every year. So this little bird goes all the way to Canada from Antarctica and come back. Uh, I think in few weeks, that's what I heard. Not uh, it, it doesn't even take more than a month for them to go and come back. So this is the one of the molting process that I was trying to explain earlier. Losing the, shedding the skin and feathers. 
they are very curious. <laughs> they will come as close as possible. This is the, another mother feeding the chick, uh, really the way the process works, that mother goes and fill up the tummy. Uh, and then when they come back on the ground, uh, they just kick it out to the mouth of the kid. Um, so that's how the feeding process works for the young, young one. So this is another uh, ecological cycle. The tiger seal is fetching the penguin in the water. One of the penguin colony. Huh. Tiger seal on the iceberg. These wells come very close to the ship. So this must be like about, I would say 15, 20 feet away from the balcony. Very really unusual to have a different color seal, really one in a hundred or so, or maybe thousand. The close up of the south whale. South right well, that's the name of the well kind. Southern right well. These are the albatross bird. They span their wing like a two meter, almost uh, what is it, two meter, like four, six feet. These are the remains of the whales. I think the head, the spine. These are gentoo penguins. Uh, these are ships at one of the Falkland Islands. These are the chicks of albatross bird, learning to how to span the wings before they take off. That's another kind of penguin with the hair. There are no polar bears in Antarctica, as this is a seal, one of the seals. Another whale's remains.
I think I'll show you videos now that uh, Sister Nina helped me compile. So give me a second. Jignish, where are you sharing sound? So, okay. does it come across the sound? The weather in Antarctica changes every five minutes, so it is totally unpredictable. So that's why you, whenever they ask you to get dressed, you need to be dressed well because it gets so windy, it gets rain and like out of nowhere you will have a lot of rain or heavy wind. So So that is one of the beauty of these are the king penguins. So these king penguins are very curious. So like when you sit, and that was my experience, that I would sit on the ground and I would just observe. And uh, people who would pass around, they would say, what are you doing? Are you invoking them? I said, yeah, I just, if I just sit quietly, they just come and touch you they check whether who are you so they uh, they touch your sweater they go around you so that's kind of a it's a beautiful moment that how they feel so connected with us And uh, this island, which is a South Georgia island, it's like you, that's what we witnessed too, that till your eyes goes, the, you just see penguins. And they said that the colony of penguins, uh, population of that is around half a million penguins. And the noise, and they say that uh, one of the story they shared about penguin with us that when that every penguin uh, they come on the shore and the process how it goes is they are looking for the mate so and how they look for the mate is that they they sing the song and even though there are half a million penguins they sing song and the mate which like the mother of a chick would know that the other mate and even the chick would know who is the parents and they also observe that what kind of a male penguin sing a song because it is it is not possible to figure out this is a male penguin or a female penguin so they would they would just observe the uh, the song the tune of the song and that's how they recognize this is a male penguin or a female penguin but everybody has all the penguins those five million penguins in that they exactly go to their chick and uh, and their mate just on the basis of the song which they sing so This is the continent. And you cannot go 
because it's a camera but you cannot go they say that you cannot go to any iceberg or any glacier three times the size of the iceberg or a glacier so we had to be very like quite far from the ice although we just get mesmerized by the beauty but we cannot go we can just go so much and uh, when people talk about antarctica people just think it's just all over its white beauty but as jignesh bhai mentioned it's melting in such a fast speed and that is one of the reason because we were uh, on the ship we were 70 a uh, we were 140 people and around 29 countries around 29 to 30 countries uh, they were visiting from and they did we always we had a sessions uh, which is educational sessions they would provide us so that we know uh, uh, the rules and we know the in- inhabitant and uh, wildlife better so they mentioned that in uh, the whole of antarctica so far one of the statistics they provided that there are 7 billion people live in the world but so far only 700 around 750000 people including tourist have touched this land so so it's still it is very far for people to and to reachable so so they have this beauty intake because of that all the black ice very old ice which has all decompressed all the oxygen has come out A lot have of heard people. The explorer story called Shackleton. Here, these twenty-two people stranded on this island hundred years ago. And you can see how difficult the mother nature, and they were surviving there for six months almost on this uh, little rock, uh, while waiting for them to rescue. So this is where the. And then when we were there. Uh, they found the ship that had sunk uh, 100 years ago called endurance uh, so that was something uh, news when we were there so as you see in on the photos that lot of ice is melting so one of the major reason people now we ha- they have a lot of visitor because people would like to see antarctica because before the ice gets melted and the situation gets become a different so yeah that was one of the reason people were visiting antarctica and it's you we can they uh, all the expedition guide they told us that that things are moving in very fast pace of global warming okay i hope you got some glimpse of what we experienced and what we visited um i'm still processing uh, a lot of photographs and eventually planning to make website and i'm sure i'll share with hamaben and 
Maven can share with the group here. But I uh, hope uh, you felt uh, the vibration that uh, I felt when I was in Antarctica and hope you uh, had good uh, meditation while watching the photos. Yes, thank you. It was amazing. And yes, you do have a God-given talent to take photography and video, no, no doubt about that. Whenever we go, oh, he always has his camera with him. He doesn't want to miss a moment of any nice scene and not to share with anybody else. So thank you so much for that. Ben, can I share some yeah. thing? Okay. So I would like to share some of the, uh, like, you know, people, uh, basically uh, people have a question and people have asked me the question that how you have, like, uh, how did, how do you, go to that land and how that process was so there is a like we we traveled in a small ship and from there we uh, they they embark us in the zodiacs so every day you have to get ready to em embark in zodiac so i'm going to share with you that how that because that's what is something uh which tells you that what preparation does it need to land on that land. So some of the videos, uh, oh, it's I just have it on my WhatsApp. So this is not a profession, like uh, it's not a plan. So I just saw that I felt like sharing with you this. So this is how they would take us to, uh, so you can just watch because I don't have Oreo and let's see this. So this is how the Zodiac is. Then they would take us to the, or to the landing site and these are the swells and that's why we are asked to dress up well so i'm going now to share you with you so we have to dress up like this and we have been given because as you see you we have to disembark in the middle of the ocean from the big ship so and then we have to get ourselves adjusted, 10 people in one. And there are two gates. You can see that other gate of the ship. So from And then you take off. So you can feel the ocean swell. And it is it requires a lot of preparation even for them. So they have to first uh, examine that whether the landing site is safe or not. And then they educate you about the place. So now, we have a lot to share. The time is less, but thank you so much for joining us. And uh, thank you for this journey. Is it dangerous? What is, uh, what is dangerous? Uh, it is risky. It's, so you have to be careful and uh, you have to follow instructions which have been strictly follow you just are not allowed to not follow that's not an option yeah so it's a because uh, it's a wild place and wild animal can attack you from like you know, those seals and leopard seals and uh, sometimes those uh, animals that can jump into the zodiac so yeah you have to be very careful so but yeah the, those guys are very uh, experts so th they make sure our safety how did you get permission to hoist the flag that's what i said that's baba's magic and uh, they because uh, why they discourage to hoist the flag and all because some, everybody how people are they don't want to take a risk because what happens that when people hoist the flag sometimes uh, they don't like a littering uh, the, another thing is uh, if they are hoisting a flag and it's in the certain direction, then it will hit any bird or any wildlife. 
so that's what is also the concern so but as we promised that we will make sure that we will be respectful so then it was easy for um, uh, easy for us to get the permission for uh, flag uh, i did not have to convince them through gyan because they see you they see your action and that's what happens that certain places you cannot just give your straight gyan but when we the way we come across the way they they see our dharna and that's how baba gets his uh, children gets their way out from whatever baba needs to get it done how did you manage the food how did i manage the food i am telling you bread butter uh, salad and fruit there was uh, i got seasick and frequently i used to take a medication for seasickness but wasn't working for me so basically at night uh, in the afternoon i used to get i used to take uh, boiled vegetables and salad in at night most of the nights i had fruits and you get cereals and yogurt and lots of other fruits so that was not the problem but you don't feel and by the time end of the it was a joke by end of the end of the trip my mouth was like <laughs> like a medicine like i just didn't feel have any taste like i was like it's like hospital ka khana <laughs> <laughs> it it really felt me like i tell you honestly it was my mouth was like tasteless and uh, one of the thing which uh, made which did seva is uh, that i when we were doing it, i showed you that uh, those you know zodiac so i was leaning to see the wildlife and uh, my phone dropped into the ocean so anyhow you uh, um, uh, jignesh bhai didn't tell you that that we had disconnected totally from the old world no contact with nobody no internet no phones of course no internet there is no network but not even because there is no internet so no so i was disconnected with him i went for more than 3 weeks <laughs> <laughs> and and then i dropped my phone in ocean so my whole memory because i like to take videos and my all memories were just kind of gone but i don't know what happened but when i was my phone was it it just fell down like something is like going into the ocean and i was just looking at it and no reaction nothing not a single thought and i was wondering on my own self that if your phone is gone whole memory is gone all numbers are gone it's you are not going to able to contact nobody nothing is happening to you that was my conversation but nothing and then that was that my reaction was observed by my expedition guide so when we were coming back we both uh, we both were waiting at the airport and he said one thing i observed that we have seen lot of travelers who drop their phone in ocean that happens because you get excited and your phone can gets into the ocean but i have never seen that your phone went into the ocean and your feel space was like nothing happens nothing happened he the way he acted is like cool and people freak out and i so at least and then him have been asked me one question tell me honestly how did you feel when you lost your phone i said nothing but now i want to talk to you <laughs> that's done <deal. laughs> it was done and then yeah so that you know it's uh, in a way it was uh, what i felt is i we were somewhere where we knew nobody we were somewhere we were not connected to anybody so that was the place like just and nobody is going to listen to your gyan nobody is everybody is there for their own purposes so it makes you feel like you are nothing and you are nobody and it makes you experience that your 
self, your authentic yourself, where you are not proving to anybody, you are not trying to impress anybody, you don't have to do anything to for anybody. So it's a different altogether feeling, and you can just be. So, uh, so, so and a lot of time you get for your own introspection and. Uh, yeah, but by the end of 19th day, I wanted to come back to the land. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> and yeah, so thank you so much. And uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for the That's... opportunity for us to share. Thanks to thank both you. of you. Thanks to both of you. Really appreciate all the effort that you made put, putting this together. And Neera, on behalf of everyone, Thank you so much. And we love the photography. It was beautiful meditation. Thank you, Jignesh Pai, for that. जगह मांगी थी हमें दिल में बसा लिया चरणों में जगह मांगी थी हमें दिल में बसा लिया एक नजर के प्यासे नजरों में समा लिया वरदान भरी दृष्टि से हमें बनाया त्रिकाल दर्शी वरदान भरी दृष्टि से हमें बनाया त्रिकाल दर्शी जन्मों के पुण्य फले हैं प्रभु दया है पलकों से उठा कर मोती आंखों का बना लिया पलकों से उठा कर मोती आंखों का बना लिया थे एक नजर के प्यासे नजरों में समा लिया आपका खुशियों के पंख लगा कर जी करता है उड़ जाऊं खुशियों के पंख लगा कर जी करता है उड़ जाऊं प्रभु प्रेम के बादल बन कर हर मन की प्यास बुझाऊं सत्कर्मों के सरगम में गुण गाना सिखा दिया सत्कर्मों के सरगम में गुण गाना 
सिखा दिया थे एक नजर के प्यासे नजरों में समा लिया आपका शुक्रिया आपका शुक्रिया आपका शुक्रिया आपका शुक्रिया चरणों में जगह मांगी थी हमें दिल में बसा लिया चरणों में जगह मांगी थी हमें दिल में बसा लिया थे एक नजर के प्यासे नजरों में समा लिया आपका Go.